Hello, everyone, and welcome to All Around the Ball, Episode 2, Planning and Preparing a Session Plan. So where do you start? When you're planning and preparing a session plan, the first thing to do is ask, where do you begin? First thing you have to decide is, are you a reactive coach or a progressive coach? A progressive coach is who works with a design curriculum ahead of time to cover all aspects of the game over a set period of time. So it could be over a week, over a month, over a year. It's set guidelines to make sure we develop the all round player. A reactive coach is someone that plays uh, coaches like professionally or in a high school environment uh, where they are reactive to a situation in a game in order to know what to coach the following week. For example, if your team looked good in possession but struggled in attack, you might choose to work on shooting and so on. So when it comes to designing a lesson plan, the advice I would give coaches is to work from back to front. The reason we do that is to make sure we show, we think about how we would like our player to look at the end of a scrimmage, which is the most realistic environment. So the first thing we want to do is we want to focus on the small sided game that ends in the ends the practice. Um, how do we want the small sided game to look? What coaching points do you wish to see come out in the small sided game? The small sided game should be two even teams going to two goals with normal rules for a competitive game. So whatever your topic is should be coming up in a natural environment. Now this way, this way it will pass on easily. Uh, more easy, I should say, to the t uh, to the players when they're learning the skill in at hand. So from the small sided game, we walk we work our way backwards uh, to a phase of play or a condition game. Phase of play is a more a more realistic practice designed to simulate and specify sections of game in a real match. So what a phase of play should look like is a snapshot of a field. So you should be able to see the game as it develops from, say, like the midfield up to the final third. A condition game is simply where you take the rules of the game and alter them to encourage players to act in a certain way. So this is a little bit less realistic because you're trying to pull the topic out. It's not a bad thing to be less realistic. Maybe the children need that extra step before the actual game to focus on the task in hand. So for example, if you're working on crossing and finishing, maybe you, you don't tell teams that they have to score from across, but you encourage them by giving them extra points if they score from across. This way, the players are trying to do it in a realistic environment, trying to achieve the goal at hand for the session. So as we've come away from our phase of play and our condition game, we work our way backwards again and we hit the skill development. The skill development should be challenging, but topic should be achievable. So for example, you're doing an activity that will have competition. It will have challenges on it, like extra defenders, extra time limits, uh, points, scores, that sort of thing. So the topic is now being taught in a uneven game so it's more advantage to the team of the topic so for example if you're working on possession it could be a four in the favor of the attackers or two down or if you're working on defending maybe it's a 3v1 or something along those lines and if we work our way backwards again as we get towards the start of our session we go into a technical practice so a technical practice can can have pressure um, most of the time it's with uh, no opposition. It's um, like a passing pattern of play. So the players are starting to understand the topic without being too challenged in the beginning. So the, you're teaching an ability to gain success. Mm -hmm. So the technical practice should be topic related and can start either with no opposition or number up advantage. Time limits and point challenges should be utilized as a way to progress the exercise to slowly increase the pressure on each player. So we work our way all the way to the front of our session from back to front and we do a warm up and the warm up in my opinion should always involve the ball, especially with the young age groups. So small sided games, rondos and stuff like that. A quote that I love here from Jose Mourinho, a great pianist does not run around the piano or do push ups with his fingers. 
To be great, he plays the piano. Being a footballer is not about running push-ups or physical work generally. The best way to be a great footballer is to play. So one thing that I like to do with my players and my teams is set up an arrival activity. So when players arrive, what do they do? Um, I think you'll see a lot of times when you when you do your session, the kids migrate going to one goal and you've got like eight kids shooting against one goalkeeper. And not only is this not really beneficial for their development, it also can create problems. Um, for example, they're not being supervised. If two or three players hit a ball at the same time, keeper could get the ball in the face and so on. So it's better to have a plan for when the kids are arriving to give them something to do. Um, a few things that I do is I create 1v1 games with my players. Um, we do this great game we call Panna, where we um, we play 1v1, but you also get bonus points for megging uh, your partner as well. Uh, the kids seem to like that. And as more players uh, arrive, we start building into bigger games, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, or with my older teams, I like to do rondos. Um, so start with like a 3v1 and build it up. It could essentially become like a 5v3 by the end of the practice and so on, uh, by the start of the practice, I'd say. So in summary, the way our practice should work, I've now gone the opposite way and I'm showing you how to how the session would look from this, the moment you arrive at the practice going all the way to the end. So we start off with an arrival activity, get the players playing early, control their activity from the moment they step out of the car. This can start with small numbers and build into a rival scrimmage or rondo, as I said. I also feel as well that once kids get the opportunity of saying, oh, well, when we get to practice, we get to play, play, play straight away. You also encourage players to get there early. Um, not only is that good for you because you uh, you can plan your session and not have those late arrivals, but also those kids, uh, if they start turning up 15 minutes early, by, by the end of the month, they've gained an extra session. Do you know what I mean? So it's definitely good for their development. After the arrival activity, we then go into our warm up. So like I say, we slowly built up into an arrival scrimmage or a rondo. Um, our technical practice is like an activity that introduces the topic in a low pressured environment. So it could be with no defenders, uh, no pressure, um, just kind of understanding the topic before we then start to progress. Um, the progression then leads us into our skill development, which is an activity that progresses from the last activity by adding extra practice, but not even numbers yet. So we're not looking at 4v4, we're looking more like a 4v2, or at this point, if your team is not quite ready for that, you can always just increase the pressure by time limits, points, competition, that sort of thing. But at this stage, we do want to start introducing more pressure to the players. Um, once we get past this phase, we're looking to get into a condition game or a phase of play. This should start to become even, doesn't have to be, it can be slightly less. So like with a phase of play, it could be like a six versus four or a seven versus four or something along those lines. The condition game, in my opinion, is only there if the players aren't really grasping the topic yet, if you need to give them a little bit more in order to help them progress, like I mentioned earlier with the crossing and finishing, encouraging them to go wide and cross without like making it a must have, because when you make it a must have, you have a player right in front of goal, they could shoot and they choose to go wide, it's taking away the realism of the game. If you can get them into a small sided game or a phase of play a little earlier, if they understand the topic well, it starts to migrate more to their understanding um, when they get the opportunity then to play in a regular game. This, this now looks familiar when I play a real game and that's when the real learning starts to happen. So we have our small sided game. Too often, I do want to stress this, too often when I worked with coaches in, in all, all over the world, really, but when I work with these coaches, they do an hour session and then they kind of like sit back for the last 30 minutes to let the kids play. There's nothing wrong with that, but I personally like those 30 minutes to have two or three 
at least one coaching point in that realistic environment where you stop the group, you show the group what they what they needed to work on throughout the session. And they sort of get this aha moment, as like I call it, where you um, where they see now the parts of the session in a realistic environment. And as I said before, that's where true learning happens. And it gives them the opportunity then to understand how to bring it out the next time they're on a field, which is what, obviously what we want to happen. OK, then when our session finishes, I like to do feedback. I like to do a little Q&A with my players. Um, I particularly only like Q&As towards the end of my session where I'm like asking questions, getting understanding rather than manufacturing, pulling the answers out of them. Um, so this gives us an opportunity to speak to the players. Did they understand what you wanted out of the session? Do like a Q&A, as I say, to get a feel for their understanding. And then that helps us then with the evaluation. Um, one thing I've done more so in my later life as a coach is um, having that time to self-reflect when I get in off the field, just have a couple of minutes to write down a little bit of paper, what I think went well, what I didn't, if I'm going to do this session again, how would I change next time? If it's the Monday practice and I've got another practice on the Wednesday with the same topic, how can I progress from this session in order to make sure that they're getting the most out of it and the most understanding? Okay, so I really hope that was beneficial. Um, I am a very open coach that is willing to talk at any time. So please feel free to drop me a comment in the uh, section. If anyone wants my email address to discuss, I am more than happy to give that as well. So thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing to Session Share. Uh, please feel free to like the video, share the video and encourage others to subscribe. Thank you very much for your time. And just remember, the only way we can grow the game is together.